All right, Shalom, I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shah, Waha, Raka, Kudash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, I want to say Shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, when you consider the dynamic between Jacob and Esau, you know, in relation to dominion, you know, and rulership. Well, obviously, the so-called white man would be in power, you know, versus your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who would be considered subjects. You know, we would be in subjection to that power and in our pursuit for some form of relief from that oppression at the hand of the oppressor himself, the so-called white man. There has been various attempts, you know, in the form of these different movements. You had the civil rights movement, which was coincided with the uh, Chicano movement of the 60s and 70s, which was a Latin based movement, by the way, which that's a cut on you Negro only Israelites out there, man. Can you explain uh, uh, the civil rights movement in this traditional sense, you know, with the so-called Negroes and the fact that simultaneously you had the Latin tribes, you know, with their own form of a civil rights movement, man. And who was the one coming enemy, the so-called white man, which that was a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, man. The house of Judah and the house of Israel would be oppressed together and that was fulfilled right here on the soils of America, Babylon the Great, you see? And our people uh, took, you know, different approaches, man. Whether it was marching, protesting, you know, feeling as if if they had voting rights, they could make some sort of change, you know? But what's fascinating is your how about you, how shall begin to step in on our behalf and you begin to see change to this very day, at, at this very moment, and it was by something as subtle as this word, man. <laughs> Showing you the power of your how about Shemir Hawashah. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me start off real quick right here. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter in the fourth verse, it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. <laughs> See? Where the word of a king is, there is power. Meaning there is no power in you taking up arms, man. You know, or stockpiling weapons. Neither is there any power in voting, <laughs> you know, or marching and protesting. No, where the word of a king is, there is power. And where are the words of this king found? Right here in the Holy Scriptures. Again, it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Meaning in no wise would one counsel out, you know, uh, omit or make void the intense purposes and plans of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh which pursuing the biblical prophecy is to ultimately overthrow Esau, the so-called white man. <laughs> See? And the Lord chose to submit their fate by something as subtle as this word. Matter of fact, let's go there. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse. It says, Not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle. See? Not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly, Esau, under the hand of the righteous in battle. Yeah, meaning the Lord's arm is not too short to save, man. The Lord could have easily took the so-called white man down by raising us up in battle. Which when you go into the history, there's plenty of occasions where the Lord raised up the children of Israel to take down their enemies in battle, you know. So it's not like the Lord don't have that option. See, again, it says, not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts. Yeah, that's also an option. <laughs> the Lord can raise up Leviathan to take this man down. That's an option. See, it says, or with one rough word. <laughs> See, or with one rough word. See that? Proving that this word is, is the uh, vehicle that the Lord chose, if you will, to smite Esau, man. Matter of fact, let's further prove this before we get into this lesson. It's the book of Ezekiel. The 
the 36th chapter, in the fifth verse, it says, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken, see, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. See that? Which Idumia is a Greek word for Edom, man. Hey, let's read this again. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken, see, against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. See that? And that's concerning the so-called white man and this current system that's in play. The Lord have spoke against it, man. The words of Yahweh Bashem and Shah has rose up against Esau. See? It says, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. So again, you know, the point, the Lord spoke against Idumia. This is how the Lord chose to rise up against you devils, man. Which brings me to this lesson in the feature scripture, if you will, you know, and, and pretty much the inspiration of this lesson, which is centered around something our Lord Yahweh Shah said concerning this very matter, all right? And it's found right here in the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, in the 21st verse, it says, Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not yet, and this faith right here has everything to do with believing on the doctrine. <laughs> when you come across the word faith, it's synonymous with believing in this gospel, man. Because you might have one who might believe in the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, yet when they're presented with the doctrine, for an example, when you presented with the idea of the RFID chip being the mark of the beast spoken of in Revelation the 13th chapter, well, if you don't believe that, then that means you have not faith, man. See? So when the scripture speaks about having faith and doubt not, that has everything to do with the doctrine. Matter of fact, let's prove that before we continue. This is the book of Mark, the first chapter in the 15th verse. It says, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. See, repent ye and believe the gospel. So when the scripture speaks about faith and believing, it has everything to do with believing or having faith in the gospel or this doctrine when it's presented unto you. See, that's when you go back here again to the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, and again, the 21st verse. It says, Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, meaning this doctrine, okay, which entails the fall of Esau. See, it says, Ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say, see, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now let's examine these words to the words of our Lord, all right? It says, but also if ye shall say, see, unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, first and foremost, this mountain right here, this word mountain is symbolic to this current rulership, this system. When you come across the word mountains or hills and it's symbolic meaning, if you will, they're concerning governments. All right. They're concerning governments, you know, mountains being symbolic to governments and hills, smaller governments, if you will. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick before we read on. It's the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter in the second verse. It says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. See, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. And this is a prophecy that's being fulfilled right before your very eyes, man. All right, we have indeed lift up that banner and that banner is symbolic to the scriptures. You know, we have exalted the voice unto them, meaning to push forth this doctrine. And it's all done right here upon this high mountain, which will be America. Now, when you click on this word mountain real quick, Yeah, and it says, hill, mountain, hill, country. See? Country. See that? Now, when you stroll down here to the Strong's definitions, it says, used figuratively, 
use figuratively, let's click on this word figuratively. Figuratively, used to indicate a departure from a literal use of words, metaphorically. See, metaphorically. So when you come across the word mountain, you know, in the symbolic meaning in relation to the scriptures, it's a metaphor for a country or a kingdom. That's where you get the term king of the hill, <laughs> you know, indicating one who's in power over a particular country or kingdom, man. So everything goes back to the spirit. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, and again, the 21st verse, Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, see, unto this mountain, which again is a metaphor for a, a particular kingdom, and in this case, America, man. In fact, this entire system that's in play, this beast system, See again, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. So here we are in a time where this man and his power is winging. You know, this man no longer have that grip of power that he once had. We had our people scratching and clawing for some form of relief when the whole time this man will be moved, <laughs> you know, ultimately taken down by something as subtle as this word. See, again, but also if ye shall say, see, unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now let's go into this word say. The scriptures say, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, <laughs> be thou moved and it shall be cast into the sea. Which, by the way, that sea is symbolic to that lake of fire, the destruction, man. <laughs> so this is all going to come about by something as uh, subtle, you know. As this word going forth. Alright. So real quick. Let's click on this word say. Again the scriptures say. But also if ye shall say. Unto this mountain be thou removed. Alright. So real quick. Let's click on this word. Strong's G 2036. Ipot. Ipot. Yeah. So that's the pronunciation. In the Greek. For this word say, all right, it says to speak, say. But when you go down here to the strongest definitions, it says to speak or say by word or writing. <laughs> See, by word or writing, which goes back to the Holy Scriptures, man. See, so we are speaking, you know, a particular doctrine that lies within a writing, which is the Holy Scriptures. And this is what's contributing to this mountain being moved, man. Esau's system being moved out of the way. It's nothing external or uh, uh, carnal that anyone did for the fall of Esau, man. This epic fall that we're witnessing, it all goes back to this word. See? Which brings me right here to the book of 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter, starting at the 20th verse. It says, O Lord, thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above the things in the heaven, and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended. Yeah, in the ways of our Lord, Yahweh Shemah would be far beyond the strength and comprehension of your people. And that's outlined in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, you know, starting at around the 8th verse down to the 10th and 11th verse. See? It says, Before whom the host of angels stand with trembling. Yeah, so you wouldn't want to gaze upon an angel, man in his natural habitat, man. You know, contrary to popular belief, you know, through the rhetoric of Esau, where he deemed the angels to be, you know, little naked white babies with curly hair. When in reality, if you was to gaze upon an angel, you know, in his power and glory, he would be considered somewhere hideous, man, not of this realm. So much so, you would give up the ghost, man. See? Yet, before the throne of Yahweh by Shemeh HaWashah, they stand with trembling. See? Verse 22, whose servants is conversing in wind and fire, whose word is true. See, whose word is true. And that's what we possess. That's what we convey. The words of Yahweh Bashmi Hawashah, which is true. That's why you're witnessing what you're witnessing, man. You know, the words we've been pushing, you know, starting with the leadership here at Great Millstone, the apostles and elders, what now is being made manifest, man. 
See why? Because these are the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh which is faithful and true. Again, it says, "Whose word is true." In sayings, see, <laughs> in sayings, constant. In sayings, constant. When you go into that word constant, it pretty much means unbroken, man. <laughs> see, but again, it says, "Whose word is true." In sayings, see, constant. Whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful. Yeah, dealing with this doctrine in this entirety. This is the ordinance of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. This is the law, man. See? Verse 23. Whose look drive up the depths. See? Whose look drive up the depths. And that's dealing with the prophecies. When the scriptures say, whose look drive up the depths, that's dealing with the prophecies. You know, those who have eyes to see. Let's prove that real quick. We're going to go back. Um, it's the book of First Samuel, the ninth chapter, in the ninth verse, it says, Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of the Most High, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. See, let us go to the seer, for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. See, so to be a seer is interchangeable with being a prophet. So when a prophet prophesies, he actually see, you know, he envision, he look ahead. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Second Ezra, the eighth chapter, and again, the 23rd verse, it says, whose look drive up the depths. That's dealing with the prophecies, man. Okay? And that's the time we in. Where Yahweh Bashim Shah is beginning to dry up that green tree. And it's all centered around the prophecies. See? Again, whose look, see, drive up the depths and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away. See? And again, those mountains, and, and in this case, would be the so-called white man. This current system that's in play, man. That's going to melt away, you know? At the climax of the Lord's indignation, man, which is going to come in the form of World War Three, <laughs> When those ICBM missiles are shot back and forth throughout the planet Earth, man. And mainly right here on the soils of America. That's biblical prophecy right there. See? Again, whose look drive up the depths and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away, which the truth, see, which the truth witnesseth. <laughs> see, let's read this again. It says, and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away, okay, dealing with the violent overthrow of America, right? Babylon the Great. It says, which truth, see, which truth which is concerning this doctrine, witnesseth. See? <laughs> so it's something as subtle as this word going forth, man. All right? It's this word, which is the words of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, which is moving, which is uh, moving out of the way. This mountain, man, this current system, the rulership of the so-called white man and his throne. See that? So what we're witnessing in itself is a miraculous sign. <laughs> This is a marvelous work right here. This is a wonder. And the fact that the Lord commanded by something as subtle as this word, you know, to take down the power, okay, of Esau, the so-called white man, and his reign of terror, which can be considered somewhat of a dynasty, man. Well, guess what? The Lord has cut this man. You know, the Lord has broken this man, withered this man, dried this man up, and ultimately is going to violently overthrow him by something as subtle as this word going out. This word is now and finally accomplishing what it was set out to do. So yeah, I just want to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Salaam.